Hello and welcome to BQ Prime. You're watching IPO Adda and uh, a company in focus today is uh, a company which recently completed its uh, uh, initial public offering on the NSE Emerge platform which is in a platform for the uh, small and medium enterprises uh, there and the company's name is Basilic Fry Stu uh, Studios. Uh, it's a company which is involved in VFX space. Uh, it came out with an IPO which was rough, uh, nearly 66 odd crores, but it got uh, overwhelming uh, response from investor community, getting over 14,100 uh, crores of bids. Uh, joining me is Mr. Balakrishnan, who is the MD and CEO of the company, and Ms. Yogalakshmi S., uh, who is the COO and director of the company. Uh, Mr. Balakrishnan and Ms. Yogalakshmi, thank you very much for joining us on BQ Prime today. Uh, Congratulations on the kind of bids that you received for your IPO. Uh, when do you expect the IPO to list on the markets? Uh, the date is yet to be finalized. We expect uh, it could be either be 13th or uh, before that. But uh, we will have to finalize uh, maybe with the discussion of the team as well. Maybe uh, where, the end of the day. Were you surprised yeah. by the kind of response that you got from the investors? Yeah, yes, uh, we are quite uh, surprised uh, with the kind of overwhelming response in the market. And uh, we thought it, there would be a good response for us, but the kind of response that we received is really overwhelming. And we would like to thank everyone uh, who took their time and used this platform to thank uh, everyone who took their time to invest. And uh, that kind of faith really kind of uh, puts us in a responsibility where uh, we really need to pay back the faith. You know, yeah, you've is. opened up a, uh, a venue of new age companies, especially with, uh, uh, with respect to VFX and all coming into, into the market. Uh, give me a sense of uh, how big the opportunity is for you. And when you when we say VFX, it involves a lot of stuff. Uh, can you give us, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, a primer to what exactly you do, uh, what kind of work you do? And if you have, uh, you know, you have a, such a body of work that you have already done with examples saying what all you did for that. Yeah. Uh, as in you mentioned, uh, this getting into public for a visual effects company means a lot to us as an industry. And as an industry, I must mention uh, the general awareness uh, that is created uh, you know, among the public uh, about visual effects industry is that would really help our industry to thrive along. And uh, as, as in what we have seen uh, over the years, the IT revolution, the early 2000s, and now the content revolution, uh, now currently uh, the last three, four years, and it really looks to take up from here. And uh, we see a uh, visual effect company will play a major part in uh, producing more uh, visually appealing content. And that way it would really help us uh, as an industry to grow along. Uh, and as in you asked about the projects and the kind of work that we do, uh, we do uh, from eight end to end the work on movies that we have involved in, uh, right from uh, pre-production to uh, final delivery. As a company, we have global teams across in London as well as in Vancouver and in, uh, planning to have one in LA. So these things will really position us to work right from the script breakdown to delivering the final project, final output to the client. If you look, if you take up some work like set extension, uh, we do a lot of set extensions for projects, television projects and uh, movie projects. And likewise, uh, we do other stuff as well, like FX, lighting that really involves uh, producing uh, eye and uh, visually appealing images for the films. So. Uh from a layman's point of view, if you know, we are used to seeing the movie, the end product, you know, so when we go and see a movie of uh, which you've done, maybe Avatar or, uh, you know, uh, uh, any other movie which you've done, uh, what part of that is being produced uh, and, you know, created by your VFX studios, just to get a feeling of uh, the kind of contribution that has gone into. Yeah, when you take a movie like uh, the League of Avatar, I think, uh, there would be major VFX studios like uh, major VFX studios like Veda Digital and those other studios would be involved in those movies. And uh, as in we do, uh, we do uh, like uh, uh, maybe we play a part in those movies and uh, we play a support role as in we get along when we do work on those movies. And likewise, as a company, we also get into work on some other movies as well where we do get to play a substantial part. And for Avatar, uh, uh, we have received end credit as a company and uh, we have done a very good uh, support role for that movie. And likewise, uh, if you take other movies and episodics where we have done also played a substantial role as well. So it, re it depends upon different uh, projects where uh, we get to do a substantial role and we also do get to do a support role uh, for a few other projects. 
but as in uh, you look into the end product that we have delivered it will be of all of a very top notch quality because that's where we are and as a company we need to make sure that we deliver of the highest quality content and uh, the margin for error is very less because we work for the kind of movies uh, yeah. okay uh, miss yogi lakshmi you know managing manpower is would be the biggest challenge for you i guess because skills is something which is very rare uh, in this field and it's an evolving uh, sector for in india as well how do you do that uh, how do you manage skills uh, is it uh, you know is there a way you man bring people across uh, so that you know they stay with you because these are very highly high skill sets which are required in this for this industry yeah so uh, there are two ways uh, we uh, keep hiring we always hire good talents across the country across wherever sites we are opening up uh, we kind of recruit a lot of talented people and similarly uh, we also train a lot of uh, uh, students and uh, fresh uh, fresh people from the industry who get trained from some academies and all so we get uh, we get a fine combination of uh, all level of artists so senior mid and junior so all put together we make a very good uh, composition of uh, the team you uh, you know uh, you know uh, is is there is there specific skill skill sets that are required how, how and do you have a training uh, program all as well uh, for future uh, to create future uh, vfx artists yes we do have a lot of training programs uh, basic level of trainings we manage it in house uh, we have a good uh, training modules uh, that we put in uh, the trainees uh, who come into the company they get trained vigorously over the training module for more than 3 uh, to 6 months and once they are ready they are put into the production uh, this is for the trainees but uh, we have training program going on for the artist level like senior mid level artist who wants to get trained into the other departments or also given opportunities we uh, tend to give uh, collaborative training from the overseas uh, trainers or the uh, mentors who are uh, working from ilm or uh, from very significant background who have lot of experience in the industry so that is how we train the artist from one department to the other department and also we we kind of always make sure that the a uh, company has a other level of training also internally happening so both the things we kind of maintain it hmm. and we are also in yeah sorry mr. yeah mr balakrishnan you know uh, give me a sense of how big is this industry in india uh, who are the major players there and uh, and how have you see because you started in 2016 it's almost 9 years uh, that you've been here what can, what has been the scaling up uh, like uh, for you if you take in the last 10 to 15 years the uh, industry uh, vfx industry in india has grown leaps and bounds uh, since i started in uh, year 2006 uh, uh, there wasn't much uh, there wasn't much in the sense uh, the industry was uh, very conservative during the stage but now if you look into the global players have come into india and have set shops here in india that means uh, there is a lot of reliance towards and uh, uh, the indian talent the potential of indian talent uh, for the contribution towards the global market has grown really high over the years so that is something is very visible when you look into the last 4 5 years where uh, um, multiple other companies that has come from either be uk or else from us and canada have come into india and likewise as a company which have started which uh, where we have started from india uh, we see this as a lot of opportunity where uh, we have already have a talent base here in india and uh, have aspirations and also we have set up global teams in london and likewise in vancouver we wanted to take this forward in a way where uh, we can collaborate with global teams and uh, and collaborate with global teams where indian team talent would collaborate uh, with uh, western experts and uh, that would really mean a lot as in our team in india would be empowered as in they work more because they have more exposure uh, the maybe the team from uh, creative leadership team from la and uh, vancouver uh, would have that expertise where they have worked with uh, worked on the industry for 30 years where they would have gone from all on set and uh, been part of uh, movies where uh, right from pre production to final delivery so that kind of exposure will be shared and that would really empower the team here in india and likewise we see this as an opportunity where it would really work out for us in terms of building indian talents to a global level understand what is needed to deliver i can we already are there but there are few other aspects where we love to really develop and empower so that will really take us to places where we can uh, uh, completely conceive uh, on the overall process of visual effects uh, you you've raised around 60 crores out in a fresh issue in this uh, in this round from the ipo market uh, how do you plan to deploy that 
uh, there are various plans that we have in place. One is to work towards our uh, technology part, technology and infra. When I say technology, it will be towards automation, automating our pipeline, the flow of work, uh, which we have done already, and uh, to em emphasize more on that and uh, create more efficiency towards the process. And likewise, uh, in AA as well as something that we have focused on. And uh, and other thing is we have other plans to you know, have two more facilities, one in Hyderabad and one more in uh, Salem. So that is something we will work towards. And uh, the fund would also go towards those plans. And uh, otherwise, uh, we also have plan to build a more sizable team. Uh, we have small team in London, but uh, we will also build a more sizable team in London. And uh, because we don't want to restrict ourselves in terms of our aspiration, we want to really go big and uh, want to build a global company uh, in a few years' time and uh, be involved in projects and collaborate with major filmmakers and uh, be the cherished entity where we can uh, really look for things you know, to make to bring the creative freedom for the filmmakers as a company uh, by involving ourselves uh, into more uh, innovative methods of storytelling and uh, by you know bringing up our technology and creative expertise to the fore. So that is where we are and that's where the funds will really go into. So this would really help us to evolve as a company and uh, we see uh, because the our uh, as in uh, as a company as in we grow this would be directly in proportional to how uh, the vfx industry in india also would grow in the next four five years so we want to take up this opportunity and make sure that we utilize it more completely give me a sense of uh, you know uh, you have two major centers hyderabad and salem uh, in india yeah. uh, these are studios i assume uh, which is there these are plan to set up uh, such similar studios in uh, uk or e in the us or canada yeah we already have uh, smaller teams over there and uh, we would try to build on top of that and uh, we will try to build uh, build a maybe uh, blend of uh, creative leadership team out there globally that is either in london and likewise vancouver and uh, maybe in la as well that's a uh, part of a plan so that is already there and uh, yeah, so uh, likewise, what we do here in Hyderabad, Hyderabad would be of a much bigger scale uh, where we will look forward to have much uh, bigger team here in India. And uh, that will really allow us, you know, as a company, uh, because the talent is something that uh, we could able to really work out here in India. And we have a very good talent pool available now. And uh, we want to make use and likewise, uh, the potential that we can, you know, the expertise that we can bring from the West, because they have the kind of exposure uh, being part of uh, uh, much bigger, uh, either be Hollywood projects or else uh, more creative projects. So that expertise and blend with the uh, Indian talent would do, do really wonder for us as a company. Uh, Yogi Lakshmi, you know, what is interesting is that uh, the kind of scale up that happened over between 2022 and 2023, your revenues jumped 3x, uh, you know, profitability from 90 lakhs to over 25 crores, which has gone. That's uh, very, uh, you know, that's what, uh, you know, uh, caught the eye of the market saying that, you know, the opportunity which is coming from VFX for you. So, and But it also puts a big, big responsibility on your hand because you have to grow now every year now that you are in the market. You have to grow and show the growth to the market. So, you know, do you are we going to see the same kind of growth going forward as well? Yeah, very much. Uh, yes, uh, uh, in the planned rate growth rate, we are we should we are expecting around thirty percent. But having this IPO done, we should at least have fifty to uh, seventy percent of growth uh, year on year. So that is what our plan is for the future. Okay, and uh, is is, uh, is is there a margin kind of thing that you work in in the VFX space? How is it actually? Just for understanding of the investors, what kind of margins that normally a VFX studios work on? So, uh, as far as we are concerned, we are determined to maintain our part uh, around thirty percent. Uh, uh, so that is what is our plans uh, for the future as well. Okay, uh, Mr. Balakishan. Uh, this growth uh, which is there uh, you have enough projects in hand to continue to get the kind of growth that uh, mr yoga lakshmi spoke about yeah we do have projects in the line the horizon uh, you know as in uh, maybe we look into the next year and uh, we do see a lot of projects coming in line and uh, that is something that we would really be happy to collaborate as well because those projects would be from uh, the existing relationship that we already have so eventually we would also collaborate on those projects and uh, uh, we've been really geared up and uh, likewise, uh, we also have our existing team work on some interesting projects at the moment as well. So we see a lot of opportunity coming up for us as a company and there, uh, as in, uh, no, the content is something that everyone would like to consume at the moment, right from uh, 
now we can see even the kids who can do consume a lot of content so that really helps and also brings up a greater responsibility in creating more uh, visually appealing content so that way we do see a lot of uh, opportunity lined up for us so you are you only focused on the overseas market or overseas projects or do you see a big scope for indian projects because indian films are now also using a lot of vfx uh, going yeah. forward we have big budget movies coming in they are using vfx so are you looking at uh, indian projects as well yeah certainly uh, we are quite open for uh, indian projects as well because uh, we do see a lot of uh, no uh, demand now for visual effects in uh, indian movies and the productions are also willing to spend more towards uh, creating more uh, realistic visual effects in our indian production so that really encouraging and uh, we do see there is a lot of potential as in uh, the indian market is growing uh, really i if you look into the last 2 3 years uh, things are really looking good and uh, we definitely want to put our hands and you uh, know want to make sure to use our global reputation that we have gained over the years for you uh, know to put ourselves in uh, to try and collaborate uh, with the indian market that could uh, really you know be very challenging and complex for us to build that reputation going give us a sense of the kind of uh, you know clients that you have your uh, top 5 clients of yours have nearly 46% of the revenues coming in mm-hmm. what kind of clients are these uh, and how long you've been working with them uh, if you look into our major clients they would be mainly major vfx studios and also uh, mainly the production houses that we work with and uh, if you look into you know the as in they contribute to a majority of our revenue uh, we've been working with them for more than like 6 7 years and uh, the relationship is ongoing with them and uh, that's a comfort zone that we have uh, really developed between these relationship so uh, we've been working with them for uh, these are the relationship that we have for over 5 uh, 6 years minimum okay and uh, normally a project takes how long uh, to complete it really varies because uh, some project would go up to maybe you know uh, typically over just over close to a year but there are a few other projects which also can run only for mid to short term that is around 2 uh, to 3 months time and there would be other few other projects where it only runs up for a couple of weeks time so we always uh, know get into different types of projects and uh, different types of teams working on other the various projects where you know uh, they can really uh, go around and uh, make sure that we meet each and every other client's demands uh, you know while you mentioned the kind of growth rate that you expect going forward i just want to understand uh, the cash flow pro kind of how how the cash flows uh, come in uh, and you can come in uh, mr yogalakshmi here uh, give me a sense of uh, you know is there a project completion method that you use for uh, accounting cash flows or is it uh, uh, on completion or advance and completion means we trying to understand the industry much better so if you can give us some uh, you know uh, insights into how you you know account for cash flows and uh, and revenues uh, accounting yeah so uh, if you're working uh, for uh, production houses uh, we usually get paid upfront around uh, 30 to 50% percent will be paid upfront and based upon the milestone completion we get paid and uh, as and when we deliver the final shots we would be paid uh, uh, as and when we release the uh, invoice maybe in a week or so if you're working for studios then uh, it will be like uh, we will get uh, turnover based uh, input so we work turnover by turnover can be from one turnover to a uh, 100 or uh, 150 turnover as well so based on the completion of the turnover we send them the invoice and we get paid in 15 to 30 days of time and is it turnover working, what do you mean by turnover just to get turnover of shots turnover of shots okay yeah, yeah because just to be i don't want to confuse it with financial <laughs> not that turnover it's turnover of shots maybe okay. it will be around 20 to 50 shots or 100 shots per turnover so that is how it is okay. and if you work for commercials it will be like once we complete the commercials it will just be for a week or uh, two weeks so we, as and when we complete the uh, complete the commercials we get paid uh, maybe in 15 to 30 days of time uh, yeah. what i could see uh, mr balagishan that nearly 90% of your revenues come from subcontracting um, are you also now looking at doing direct contracting uh, from with some of the studios and uh, or is subcontracting the way to go forward and how do you expand it from here Yeah, absolutely. Our plan is to get into more direct work, and uh, as in you would have seen, uh, you know, uh, we do already have a team in London and building on our team closely to the locations where the productions do really happen. Uh, that is a uh, uh, mainstream Hollywood as well as uh, European productions. So, and uh, likewise, that is our plan, and uh, we are also planning to build our creative leadership team uh, in LA as well. So that would really uh, amplify our uh, you know, 
uh, uh, chances of getting into more towards production. So uh, our focus would be mainly towards uh, working closely with production uh, as in uh, more chances and uh, the subcontract will always be there and that is again uh, a major boost to our revenue so that we will still maintain and also will focus on building our uh, production uh, direct production work through mm. these global team yeah uh, give me a sense of uh, what kind of projects you are working on or how many projects you are working on uh, how many movies or uh, web series or you know because you are working with netflix as well you are working with fox studios as well and you are working for other uh, major studios globally so i you may not be able to give me the names but at least the kind of work that you are doing what kind of revenue uh, you know projects uh, worth revenue projects are these at least uh, we would be working on a 30 to 35 projects at a time on floor i uh, uh, maybe it is with across chennai and pune and uh, if you take uh, what the kind of projects that we would be working on would be like mainstream hollywood movies and there would be like uh, 15 to 20 percent of commercials and 40 to 50 percentage of mainstream movies and uh, again uh, like 30 percentage of uh, tv episodics work. so it's a kind of blend between uh, commercials episodics and uh, movies so that's how the work is distributed on floor and uh, likewise uh, the projects as in you mentioned uh, uh, we have listed few on our websites as well, like uh, the ones uh, which we can disclose. And uh, there are a few other projects that uh, we've been working on now, which we wouldn't be able to disclose at this stage. So, yeah. But uh, every project that we work on are really uh, reputed, well, reputed projects and uh, no mainstream projects. That's all uh, we've been working on. Mm -hmm. uh, I know uh, I'm trying to push uh, across and trying to get more information from you, but that's my <laughs> work. Uh, my, final, <laughs> my final question to you is basically, you know, you came on the Emerge platform. Um, do you yeah. have plans to eventually move to the main board as well? Yeah. Yes, uh, we would be happy to. Yeah. Uh, Maybe, is, yeah. is there a timeline that you have set yourself to meet all uh, the no, conditions so that you can move to the main board? Uh, so we don't have a timeline, but uh, we do definitely have an idea to get into main code at some point in time. Yeah, that's something we would really be looking forward to. Thank you very much today, Mr. Balakrishnan and Ms. Yoga Lakshmi for joining us today on BQ Prime. Uh, and congratulations yeah. once again for the kind of response that you got for your IPO. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. It was really a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you.